Thanks, David. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Um, as David mentioned, I did have a, a team, but I want to specifically uh, thank Roger Venables from the Property Management Department and Brian Beck, who kind of led the committee and actually led the, the efforts in putting everything together. Uh, and I'll go into that a little bit. Uh, as David mentioned, well, I'm going to give you a little background. 2014, just as a form of reference, if you recall, the 2014 bond program was right under three, $300 million, $292 million, uh, that had about 75% uh, dedicated to transportation, and then the, the rest spread out between the parks facilities and then overall uh, various facilities. Uh, this map outlines where uh, all those different projects kind of laid out. You see it's a busy map, but you get the, you see how it, it spread out throughout the city. Um, and as we looked forward and we asked departments to put together their potential requests for a 2018 bond program, um, we had $1.6 billion of potential projects that we had to <laughs> kind of whittle down. Just a um, little. That's what we formed a committee uh, made up of the various departments, again, led by Roger and, and Brian Beck, Brian on the transportation side and Roger on uh, basically everything else. Uh, but as uh, David mentioned, um, well, let me get a little bit into how the committee worked. So in essence, the committee put together uh, prioritization criteria that were used to try to whittle down those projects. And you see here, I'm just going to touch on a couple. I won't go through every one of them. But uh, project col collaboration, for instance. Uh, is it a project that really collaborates with another project or another potential need uh, that would be bond funded? Uh, then it got more, you know, it got higher up on the list. Uh, public safety, is it something that's going to reduce times where we have times are too high, you have to meet the public safety requirements. Uh, you'll find one of the fire stations we have on here, there's a donut hole around where the city has grown where the, it needed to be addressed. Uh, and then leverage opportunities. Do we have projects, and we talked about the pre-planning funding uh, that we, we asked for on the street side, is where are we going to find those leverage opportunities out there if we can identify the right-of-way that's needed and we can go to uh, the various property owners and so that's how different projects will, will um, move up. As I mentioned, you saw this slide, a version of this slide at the retreat, uh, and David mentioned uh, allowing some bond capacity to deal with partnership uh, opportunities. And in the past, we've included uh, these type of projects or money for these type of projects in the actual bond program. And we're, this, t this time around, we're leaving that out. We're leaving that bond capacity so that we can deal with those projects as they come up. Uh, and the council approves those on a on a case by case basis versus tying up capacity in a bo voter bond program that could be used for something else that's needed now. Uh, and down here, just David mentioned a couple of these, but you know we've been talking to the state and Cog about East Lancaster and a potential grant there if we need grant match. Uh, and then one of the items that popped up as we went through this whole process is, you know, if we ever get to the point where we have a foundation that approaches a, about a permanent supportive housing project, and if it made sense, this was the right tool to be used. So we just wanted to lay out uh, potential partnership ideas here. So David uh, broke the, the news of the $399.5 million for the program overall. Uh, as, you, as I noted, in the 2014 bond program, 75% of the funds went to transportation. This time around, we're at 65%. And, and so Doug did get overruled, as David mentioned, um, <laughs> although it is a growth of uh, approximately $40 million uh, in the program overall. Um, you see the breakouts here. The way these, this is broken out is we're looking, uh, we're recommending to have six propositions. And those, uh, at the end, I'll lay those out, uh, how those would light out. But uh, you say 65% for transportation. Uh, the other uh, large portion, 21% for parks and recreation facilities, uh, that includes uh, community centers, uh, recommendations, and then the library, fire safety, which are two fire stations. And I'll go through each of these individually, the animal control facility up north uh, and uh, police facility south. So I'm going to start with the streets and transportation side of things. So as David mentioned, one of the key things, oh, that's right, Roger and, and Steve are passing out a listing of potential projects and the proposed projects at the top of the list of all the streets and then all the facilities and then a map in the back where those facilities are located throughout the city. Um, as David mentioned, because we're not 
at the where we're 100 percent pay as you go on our maintenance side one of the things that we need to be able to address is to maintain our current needs our current systems uh, so you'll see we're gonna we have a focus on that we have a focus on safety improvements throughout the city when it comes to our transportation network uh, neighborhood safety specifically uh, but also to make sure that um, railroad crossing bridges and the like uh, and street lighting uh, is in good condition and then the balance of the funds be after those, after those first two high priority needs went to the uh, building of capacity in our network overall so on the uh, side of maintaining the network uh, 65.5 million dollars have been has been allocated um, to neighborhood thoroughfare neighborhood streets thoroughfares and in this time for the first time this past year we made a change operationally where TPW is responsible for park roads. And so park roads uh, will be part of this uh, piece of the proposition or these dollars. It's a 34% increase from the 2014 CIP. One of the things that we did uh, that uh, uh, is included here that I wanted to mention is there, there's been a lot of requests from the city council and, and from uh, just the citizens about street markings. So as part of this, if this would go forward in 2018 and was approved, uh, we would actually recommend in the 2019 budget of taking money out of the PAYGO that goes to streets and move it to pavement markings, $2 million, um, that would allow us then to have pavement markings basically fully funded in our pay-as-you-go side so that at least that one category, we're at, at full maintenance on that. Um, the revitalized established corridors, uh, we're recommending, you'll see the list in a minute. Uh, we have, you know, as mentioned, the established corridors within the city. This is within the loop, and we're specifically talking about University and West 7th, the amount of traffic that, are, that those two streets have. How can we look at those? How can we reimagine those so that they become complete streets and better utilized by all citizens, walking, bikes, uh, moving traffic through there, uh, so that they have better connectivity and better flow amongst those two uh, thor thoroughfares? And then traffic signals. Uh, we need to upgrade. We heard, uh, I know it was last week at the council meeting, all the issues about traffic signals and them being off. Uh, we have an issue with every time we have a major uh, storm or we have uh, lightning specifically, <laughs> uh, the older systems go offline. Uh, lightning, those, those um, uh, traffic signals, the sequencing of them goes off. We have, to every, we have to send folks out and they have to physically touch every single one of those units to get them back and that's a, a big workload. If we can modernize those, have uh, those done remotely, that's a change out of the types of systems, that's what we're trying to move to. On the safety improvements, uh, neighborhood school safety, you sh shows, is shown as a uh, new category, but we specifically broke this out to, for transparency, where we can dedicate these dollars on the, on the school safety side, the safe pathways to school in the past, it's just been done as part of redoing streets or going and addressing an issue when it pops up. Uh, so this is a program that will be very transparent going forward with the dollars that are set aside there. Uh, bridge replacement is no change from, from the previous CIP. Uh, same with railroad crossings. This is just maintaining our current um, um, network that we have out there. And then street lights. We've heard you over the last year <laughs> to 18 months. Uh, this is a 100% increase from the last bond program. We had $5 million in the last bond program, this is an increase to 10 million. And then finally, the, the added network capacity. Um, as I mentioned, and I, I went over in the uh, retreat with you all, in the work session, I talked about us focusing on throughput, not necessarily long segments of corridors. Um, and so we're really gonna focus on intersections. And you see there, the intersections are, are increasing by 330%. Uh, it is an increase from 109 million in this category to 120 million, but we're moving more of the dollars to the intersection so that we uh, focus on that throughput. Uh, and then we also increased uh, the sidewalks and bikeways piece of this uh, by 12% from the last, um, the last program. So when you look at where uh, these improvements and where we're focusing and the potential um, um, improvements will go. What you see in this gray box here are all the, the uh, improvements and then these are the ones that were, the ones in gray here and this box down here are the ones that we're recommending to do pre-studying on. 
not all of these improvements will happen. Um, where we're going to focus on with that pre-study is one, some of them will be ready to go next time around or if a developer shows up ready to do something. Um, on some of these, we'll be able to focus which intersections are going to give us the biggest bang for the buck. And so that's, but we are looking at all of these so that we can have them ready to go at some point if they're not actually part of the recommendation at the end of this year for, for this program. So I'm going to stop here and, and maybe it might be easier to take any questions as I go through these big sections like this. Sal. So. Um, excellent presentation by everyone involved. Obviously, this is a very important as we go forward with our growth. And it's always a, a balancing act in these bond programs, taking care of the older parts of the city and then, of course, taking care of the newer parts of the city. Um, uh, it seems to be very well thought of. The, the thing that I would like to, uh, is a couple of questions. On the sidewalks, bicycle lanes, on the trails and, and walking, we're trying to get more people to walk. So a uh, couple of things there. Have, are we going to go forward and present that component of this to the Pedestrian and Bicycle Advisory Commission, to our partners like Streams and Valleys, all those good folks? All right, that's question one. After, after this meeting or after this presentation, mm -hmm. we'll have the public portion and we'll be talking to all those stakeholder groups. And as I get into the park side, you'll see more about the... Uh, trails and then previously I had asked that you know this bond program be looked at by our experts on walkability yeah. and for their suggestions recommendations uh, totally agree with adding capacity uh, but looking at different models of, of moving people around right uh, they're, they're obviously involved. okay all right and then the only other thing is uh, with respect to these parks uh, and community centers Okay, all right. This is just on, on the transportation piece first. Okay, I wanted to all start. right. Yeah, this is just the transportation piece. And then the only other thing I would say is talk to the T. Uh, they've got their, their the, make sure that this plan works with their plan because we want these buses to move in our city and we want to make sure that any intersection or capacity improvements help in those uh, bus routes. That's, that's all I have. Gina. I think it's a great presentation. It's the most exciting bond package proposed that I've seen in recent years, and it brought out the coverage like an old reporter. I even got Sandy Baker in here. Uh, what I would request, Jay, uh, Doug, David, I know you're not psychic, but it would be real good if we could include some type of proposed schedule or anticipated schedule when we roll this out, because when people see it... You're going to see that in, okay. a in Michelle's practice. Well, you guys are good. Okay. We, we, have, a, we have schedules and also... Right. Uh, more detail about the public portion of this at the end of the presentation. Okay. And we're going to get some, none of this is written in stone yet. It'll be just like our last bond election that we took it out for 26 meetings and came back and changed a bunch of it. And Michelle is going to present to us a minute, in a few minutes, a rollout plan for communication. You'll be welcome to have some input on how you want to change that. And they'll be contacting all your offices about meetings in your area to talk about this. Kelly? I am uh, sorry. I I'm gonna disagree with Gina. I because I thought 2014 we did an amazing job I did too. in rolling it out and and having the conversations. And so really, this just adds to the excitement of how we are going to engage the community um, in, in rolling out the bond <clears throat> program. However, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see each council member have. Um, a say in some of the, the street pieces that happen because I, I'm looking at some streets on here from District 8 and I'm thinking your list doesn't quite match up to the list that I've been compiling for the last couple of years as I've driven around the street. So, um, you know, once we start putting things out publicly, um, it almost, it's, it's like, okay, this is what's going to happen. So anything that we start to change, we have to be really careful about it. Yep. So I really would like, before we do anything publicly, I'd like for us to have individual meetings so that we could talk about some of these things on That's here. That's part of, Michelle's going to be scheduling meetings with council members for them to go over with Jay and some of the others on this stuff. So uh, on the neighborhood should, street side of things, we we'll be working with each council member on the lists that we have. And this is just based on the staff's uh, list overall. So th those get <laughs> massaged as we go through this. Dennis, did you have a question? Yes. Um, I'm looking at the, uh, I lost my page here. Oh, here we go. Uh, 258 uh, million on, and that's total transportation, correct? 
That includes that includes the uh, 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 the one percent for art and that final number. Okay, good. Versus the twenty fourteen was what two uh, two nineteen two ninety nineteen two nineteen two one nine for yeah that's what I thought. So we're we're talking about uh, thirty about forty about forty million. for forty million more. Do we have that capacity, Doug? Can we spend that? Yes, sir. We believe so. Okay. They've had a pretty good trial for the 2014 delivering it, so the, I think the understanding was that they, David and I have discussed this, that they could definitely deliver on this amount of money. Okay, Jay? You gonna? We're getting into the next section, this is gonna cover the parks and recreation and all the facilities <laughs> that we have laid out, so it's basically the rest of the uh, propositions. And um, the, if you look at these pictures, um, we're going to do a better job about the skate ramp not being so close to a fence <laughs> uh, when we actually build them. Just a little, little tight there to stop. But, um, <laughs> so on the uh, park and rec and facility improvements, this uh, uh, map outlines where those facilities are going. Um, as David mentioned, we wanted to try to uh, make sure that we took care of the um, the facilities that we already have, but also try to address some of the, the growth issues that we have going on. And mm -hmm. starting with community park expansions, um, you see we have six community parks uh, that are recommended um, and they would be developed in, in accordance with the park and recreation open uh, space master plan. Mm -hmm. So these are the type of amenities that ultimately would be built in the various parks, not every one of them in every park and it's specific uh, to the parks themselves. Um, but they're the the six parks are, are located uh, on the map there as you see them marine creek ranch community park um, alliance gateway north park riverside some of these i can't really see it on the map but you see the the locate chisholm trail uh, and then the north uh, uh bows debos park beyond the community parks we have neighborhood park development there's eight mm -hmm. of these that are identified to have improvements. Uh, the amenities, the typical amenities that would come with those are outlined there, uh, nearly $4 million. And again, you see a lot of that uh, development is occurring in some of the areas where we have the fastest growing growth going on uh, to address those it's needs. There. Walks and trails, uh, the big uh, amount here is $4 million over in the far east side. And this is the goal to try to connect River Legacy Park in Arlington and finish that connection over to this side of the Will that do that? I'm sorry. Will, will this, with that $4 million to River Legacy, will we be connected to Arlington and be able to access their trail system with this money? That's what we're, that's what we're uh, trying to get to that in connection with the improvements that Ken Newell will be doing through his development. Uh, we're hoping that $4 million is whatever takes us from inside the loop all the way out to River Legacy Park right here. Yeah, I mean, because we're all aware that ultimately we want to connect even to Dallas by trail system. So this is a very critical piece long term, and we need to connect to Arlington. I would, you know, I would, I don't, I'm only speaking for myself, but I'd like to make that happen with Mr. Newell, get that happen as quickly as possible, because that is a, that, connecting Arlington is right. huge. That's the end. It's well, a bit, it's, it's a big citywide. It, it's, it's, yeah, a, it's everybody, a, everybody wants to go there. Er, and I'm telling you, that will be used heavily. That will that will that trail system there would be used heavily. And that's the intent. park really picks up and opens more and more, that piece into Arlington right. really becomes critical. The intent with the four million is to get that specific project completed. And are the you three and a half with million are for other to see gaps. they lack about a half mile on their connection. So we've had, uh, I think, I believe the the part. I don't know, Richard, is Richard here? Um, our coordination with Arlington on the on the trail connections. Those are all part of our master plans, okay. right? Okay. Yeah, there's, there's been discussions. And we then- get ours done and then go, we didn't know you were doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then the three and a half million that's also identified are, are for gaps within the system throughout the city. So as you can see, more than 50% of this money is going for that one project. Yeah, great. Community centers, this is a big piece in this uh, program uh, this year. Uh, nearly $30 million or about $30 million. Uh, there are two would basically be new centers, but a, a brand new center, far north Fort Worth, um, the Northwest Community Center, uh, and then the complete uh, demolition and construction of a new 
uh, center, the Diamond Hill Community Center. And actually, there's enough space on that park to actually build a new one and not demolish the old one until we complete the new one. So that's the plan for, for that. Um, that is a very heavily used facility, maybe the, mo the, the most in the city, and it's also in, in the worst shape. Uh, we went through, the property management department went through an analysis of all the community centers to determine um, those that had uh, the highest operation costs, whether it made sense to re rehab or replace. Uh, and this is the, these are the ones that came to the top. They did that in coordination with Sonia's group and with the Parks Department. Um, Northside Community Center uh, would be a complete renovation, design and renovation of the, of the nearly 20,000 square foot center. Um, and then Sycamore Community Center would also have a renovation of it. Uh, and then we have, we currently have the Thomas Place Community Center and it's owned by the Fort Worth <coughs> ISD. Uh, we have on our longer term plans to do uh, renovations and improvements there and uh, staff's recommending that we should own that center and have it, have it be a city property. So we're in discussions with the ISD about purchasing it. Uh, so we have uh, set aside a million dollars here to, to get that done. Um, as you can see, the new community centers are <clears throat> at the new standard 25,000 square foot model uh, that would be the model that we would go forward with. The next area is athletic field lighting. Um, total of 10 fields uh, would uh, have lighting for competitive play. You see here Harmon uh, Athletic Fields, North Park, and then Rolling Hills, $3 million. Uh, and then I was going to put in pictures of the actual facility, but I thought I'd wait until we get into the public meetings. So with the, with the uh, pro Trail Drive project, which is a partnership project, um, the Parks Department is going to have to move its facility that's located uh, right where the Trail Drive is going. And it'll be moving down to this area just south of James, the James Avenue maintenance facility, TPW maintenance facility. Uh, that's where they have their overall maintenance facility. The facility uh, are 1940s, 30s, 40s era barracks that um, have been that were given to the city by the feds, and they have been utilized as the parks maintenance facility. Uh, and they, in my I go all the way back to my internships. In my 30 years of working for, nearly 30 years working in the city, they are maybe the worst facilities I've ever seen somebody work in. Um, and really, as part of the moving the trail drive facility and getting this done, uh, the, that facility need, needs to become much more efficient and needs to be updated. And so the recommendation is that all these, uh, we, we renovate, or actually tear those down and put in a new facility uh, for $9 million for the Parks Department to be able to move forward with their work. And then the last item under the parks area is uh, Rockwood cl uh, Clubhouse. This would include the clubhouse, a cart barn, and then renovation of the existing maintenance facility. This is hand in hand with the renovation of the Rockwood Golf Course, that, the new Rockwood Golf Course that will open this summer. Um, and this would complete that overall project uh, it's estimated to cost $6.6 .6 million. Oh, I'm sorry, I said the last item. So these items here um, include a universal playground for 750000 The actual location has not been identified. That would be part of the process. Uh, but this was an item that came up in, during the 2014 bond program that we were not able to include. Uh, so this would be the construction of 15 to 20,000 square foot playground with that resilient surfacing. Um, $3.5 million to match, to use and leverage with our uh, park fees and being able to acquire uh, more parkland as we go forward for both neighborhood and community parks. Uh, and then with our ongoing contract with the zoo, uh, we're recommending including $2 million in the program uh, to be able to partner with the zoo with their programs as they go forward as that um, contract requ uh, requires the city to address utility relocations and upgrades uh, when they make improvements at the zoo. Moving over to the library system, we have, uh, we're recommending only one library and that's a replacement. That's a replacement of the Wedgwood Library which is currently less than 5,000 square feet with a more up-to-date, larger 16,000 square foot library. Um, and looking, the library department looking at 
their needs, looking at to, to relocate it a little bit closer to the McCart Avenue Sycamore School area to be more centered uh, where the population and the folks that, that frequent the libraries are. We don't have an exact location. Buying the property is part of the process, uh, but we're recommending a little bit over 10, well, about $10.5 million uh, for the, the new library. Uh, the, the part of this would be the actual closing of the existing library and then uh, selling the property. On the fire safety side, we're recommending two uh, new fire stations, or one new and one redo. Uh, fire Station 45, I mentioned uh, the need for a donut hub, hole up here. We're looking basically the area of Harmon Road and North Tarrant Parkway. Uh, we've grown all the way around there, and there's a need to be able to improve our times into this whole area here. Uh, the, the, fire state, the fire department had that as a high priority. So we're recommending um, um, $7.8 million. That includes all FF, FF&E and the uh, apparatus. And then it's a three-bay um, double company, but it wouldn't become a double company till out into the future. We're going to build it to that size. The, the mm -hmm. projection is that it would get to that point in about 2025 or so, uh, or a little bit after that. But we would already have the facility ready for that. And then the replacement of uh, Fire Station 26 down off of Hewlin. Uh, this is a uh, old fire station. It needs to, it, it doesn't meet the needs of the fire department any longer. So this would be an actual demolition and then a two-story, a replacement with a two-story uh, building. We would, during construction, have to move the companies to, to a different location and they'd have to serve that area from other uh, fire stations, but um, it can be done. Gina, do you have a question now? Yeah. It's probably for Doug Wurzik. You want to wait till Jay finishes this piece? I thought you were through. Oh, we still have a couple more. Okay. <laughs> uh, animal care and control. Uh, this is basically in the 2014 bomb program. Uh, the program included design of uh, the new Far North Animal Control Center, Care and Control Center. Uh, this includes the funds to actually build it, 30,000 square foot animal shelter um, facility. Uh, it would help balance out drive times, those kind of things, uh, and, and allow the shelter to be up north. You see that? That's going in. There's no property acquisition since it's part of our far north uh, facility that's a joint facility of several departments. Sal. This is much needed, obviously, right now. The, the, the only other animal control center is in the Martin facility. Uh, I'm not hearing any reports right now of any uh, council members or candidates getting chased by dogs <laughs> for bites like I almost did a couple of times. So uh, animal control is doing a good job, but we def desperately need this facility in the north. So it's thank you, Steph. It's still three weeks of door knocking. Yeah, so, so uh, all of you council members and candidates, be careful out there knocking on doors. All right, uh, there are still loose dogs out there. Good job so far, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> and then the police facility. Uh, we're recommending, and this, this is the high priority for the police department, is to design, and, uh, uh, purchase land, design and construct a new South Patrol Division headquarters. Uh, currently it's um, located in multiple facilities of the overall. We would be able to eliminate two leased facilities uh, through this process. Um, it's about almost $18 million project, uh, but it would centralize the police operations in the South patrol division and make it much more efficient uh, and also uh, get the facilities to the size and needs of the, of the police department and where we are. Um, I'll get, I'll, I'm going to go in through here. This is just basically the layout of all the parks and <coughs> community recreation and community centers, uh, nearly $86 million. This includes the 2% for art funding. And then the summary for the other areas. Um, and when you look at the overall, as I mentioned, the propositions, we, have, we would have six propositions being recommended at the 399.5. That includes uh, about $3.5 million, I mean, um, $5.5 million in art uh, funding as part of that. And then before I get into the schedule and, and start taking questions, the uh, one of the things David mentioned is what's the impact to the operating budget. So we laid out uh, what we thought 
how these, these projects would get completed, assuming you have to buy property, construction, design, all those kind of things. Um, and you see there, uh, you see the red numbers, that is associated with the elimination of rent that the police department currently pays for their facilities. So at the end of the day, that facility will actually, the new facility on the operations side, assuming you're not adding any police officers, those kind of things, just the operations, uh, would actually reduce their budget. But at the end of the day, through the end of this program, when you get done with the whole thing, uh, it would add about $7.2 million to the operating budget for all these facilities to come online. On the schedule side, um, next month, Michelle will be coming to the city council at, at a meeting with, once she touches base with y'all, with more specific dates for public meetings. Um, and the overall schedule for the public meetings and, and how we roll those out. Um, we will be coming, those would happen between June, from June through October. Um, we, we would then have city staff finalizing our recommendations in November, be able to come back to the city council in December uh, so that you can finalize uh, the projects in that December and we have January kind of to fall back to in case we needed uh, before a February date of setting the actual bond election in May if the council chooses to, to uh, have May 5th, uh, 2018 as the bond election day. And with that, before I turn it over, so Michelle does have some slides to go more specifically into the, the public um, education piece of this, but I'll take any questions you may have on the projects. I've got a question for Gina. Gina. Got a question for Doug in terms of uh, materials. And Doug, my, my question is, are you able to tell us the criteria for when you might use concrete versus the other way you guys do streets? Asphalt. In regards to the use of asphalt or concrete, if the, if the existing street is, is asphalt, we'll uh, uh, optimize its uh, utility and reconstruct it in, in asphalt. Okay. And if it's a, a current concrete street, we'll replace the panels or put it back in, in a concrete situation. Now, in, 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 in English, when you say panels, does that mean a concrete street will be replaced with concrete or what? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank if, you. If we're doing a whole replacement, typically we'll we just replace sections of, of, of a concrete street. Okay. Because that's usually what's deteriorated. Okay. Thank you. Chungus, do you have a question here? I have a couple of things. All right. Uh, first, just a minor thing, but in your sheet, uh, you show the police station, South Division, moving to District 2. And uh, I think it's... I think that's District. just a typo. <laughs> it's a typo. <laughs> That'd be a long drive. Yeah, it would be a long drive. Uh, also, in, I think incumbent on this is, is a lot of planning as the growth occurs. And I, I would ask that our parks folks look at the parks policy as we bring in and certainly with um, Chisholm Trail and Walsh Ranch uh, the developers have planned a lot of park but in our park acquisition the biggest complaint we get in a new neighborhood is that the realtors are all prom or the developers all promise a beautiful park and all we take over is a piece of land so uh, we need to look at our parks policy in my opinion um, obviously, um, when you talk about libraries and fire halls, and I know Jay's working on this, but land acquisition, getting out there because a lot of this property is escalating in prices and we need to be looking in, in the planning process uh, to land acquisition and I congratulate Jay for that. Um, also on the area of parks, uh, and, and I know we've got a presentation coming and it may be covered, but uh, in the past we've talked about uh, the need for a senior community center. It's, and it's coming in okay. a bit. Okay. Not all of us have seen the presentation. No, I'm just saying it, it's on your agenda okay. for today. Uh, the other thing uh, on schools, uh, make sure we're coordinating with schools on athletic fields and lighting and things because most of our parks are commingled. And then finally, and, and I've brought this up in the past, let's make sure that arts projects are part of the design process so that we're not trying to design the art after the fact um, uh, that it's included in 
uh, obviously it's a separate category. I understand that, but uh, we don't. In Arts Council, I think is doing a better job, but we don't need to be waiting uh, two years after a project's completed before the oh, art Lord, is. I agree. Is or 10 years or whatever the number is. I agree. Thank you. Gina. Jay, I, I do have a couple more questions for you. And I, I would like to see consideration given for a, a police substation, a real police substation somewhere in my district. You know, we were making do with reopening Cavill and with the crime stats re being reported or the, even just the perception of crime, certainly District 5 should have a permanent police substation. That's just one. Uh, the other thing, I want to thank Parks because, you know, they have really brought us up to being at the level of acceptable service with Parks. We've opened up Parks all over the district, and that's important. But what has happened with us, and it's no fault of the present administration, but where the Eugene McRae Recreation Center is, there was this beautiful grassy knoll. Well, now it's going to house something industrial. And so the idea of parks knowing where future land acquisitions should take place is very important. It's really kind of sad, you know, what's happening there. But there was no money. But at least identify where we, where we should. And when you've got vacant land as your neighbor of a recreation center, that should be on the radar. But we didn't have money for that. And the last thing I'll mention to you is I've been telling constituents in District 5 to start their wish list for the last two or three months. Uh, there is a growing, growing buzz for a swimming pool. Yeah, you've got the same thing on your list that I do. Okay. Pools was my next yep. question. So I knew three or four of us are going to ask that. It, 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 you'd be surprised who's asking for them, too. And uh, the other thing, let's see. Uh, we, had a, we had a pool who was going to bring up pools first, so you went. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That'll work. It'd be betting who was going to do this. <laughs> so that, um, 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 that, that's about it. But uh, yeah, we, we need a substation, need presence, whether it's a partnership with a private developer, I don't care. But uh, we really need to have that. And I think that's one way we, we've talked about it being addressed is in the partnership side, if we can find a partner mm -hmm. that at the end of the day operates it so it doesn't become part of the operating side, okay. like we've done the last few, uh, it would be a good way to go. Thank you, sir. Ann. I just, this was just timely because it was brought up to me at an Easter egg hunt last weekend and that was um, lack of soccer fields. And I don't know if that's the lighting I see on fields, but I think they were just expressing an overall desire to not have to drive to another community for soccer. There's a ton of kids playing soccer in Fort Worth and my kids don't play soccer. So it's my husband does, but, um, just that desire. And I don't know if that's something that rises to the level. And I have to admit, I haven't read the master plan to see where it is on the priority list, but that's been expressed to me. Yeah, I think it's and part of the community parks. And as they go through the process of identifying what are the needs at the various locations and also the public input, process I think that's where it comes I think looking at the pools and looking at the partnerships on the pools is going to be critical to what we how we move forward here but I had a question for Richard too on the parks and on these lit fields and partly in uh, conjunction with Ann's on soccer fields but Richard a lot of the major cities have gone to hiring having a programmer who programs these parks I know Gateway Park sits underutilized lots of times and if we light a bunch more of these fields are we going to have Staff, are you looking at sta software and staff that will allow this online programming yes. and somebody that's promoting it, that's going to these leagues and saying, bring your tournaments here. Right, with all We with put all, the all this money system. in. We want to make certain somebody's saying, let's use them right. and let's get the most events we can on them. Yeah, our, our approach for most of the soccer fields is to work with the soccer associations, let them run the program, bring in the referees, all we do is provide the facility and then field monitors to just manage the facility. So this, this will light 10 soccer fields in the system. There's currently 15 lit, so it'll take us an inventory of 25 soccer fields. What about our overall programming? We may want to do that as future, because mm -hmm. I keep getting questions about why aren't we contracting with somebody to do all the Goatway and all these parks and really bringing in, in conjunction with our sports initiative, initiative with the uh, CBB, why aren't we bringing in more sure. small high school and independent league tournaments and things? We'll be glad we've got to share with yeah. We'll be glad to share with you the information because this, this year alone we had all the uh, <coughs> junior college and college yeah. tournaments out at Gateway. So 
it's the capacity is full at this juncture. So those that might be saying we're not at full capacity okay. probably don't understand the that's program possible. that's occurring. I just think we but can we'll be glad answer some questions. Thank you. Other questions? Jungus? Just in follow-up to that, Mayor, many cities have comp sports complexes. Yes, where they we do. Don't. Yes. Uh, at some future date, uh, I'd like a, maybe a talk about that because we do have the sports initiative. And the thing about having a complex versus fields scattered throughout is you also get the hotel and mm -hmm. food business. Mm -hmm. Not Necessary. But just uh, a discussion on that issue would be good. Yeah, that's a good point. And when I mentioned the schools, uh, certainly athletic fields, uh, you know, Chisholm Trail Park, what, Chisholm Trail Park is associated with the school complex. Also, the Nanatorium, uh, you mentioned schools earlier, but uh, that's where we need to talk to them about things of that. Crowley ISD is going to build our Nanatorium. Yeah, both Crowley and Northwest have been looking at natatoriums and love to have partners on those. That's a good idea, but as Gateway expands, it'll be even more likely to be a spot that's really a city complex now. I think we could really put that to use. I'm gonna invite uh, Michelle Goot up so she can uh, cover our plan for the uh, public engagement piece here. 